Hi guys, Asmo here and today we're gonna go over the Game Balance Manifesto. This is a manifesto that GGG releases every time before the league, before they release the patches, the patch notes themselves, because uh, they are still testing and tweaking the numbers, but they already know what they want to do, so they are releasing the manifesto so that people can start preparing earlier and uh, knowing what to expect. So. Every expansion provides opportunity to for us to uh, reassess the current meta, uh, blah blah blah, okay. A game balance and Path of Exile Harvest. We're putting much of our balance focus on brands, war cries and two-handed weapons. As a result of Delirium going core, we've also taken the opportunity to balance cluster jewels and their place within the game. We've worked to improve two-handed weapons with big slow hits by improving these investment options across the board. So, war cries, uh, oh wait. If they improve cluster jewels for two-handed weapons, that's kind of nuts because two-handed weapon cluster jewels already were crazy. Like there is a cluster jewel that gives you 20, like a node, one single node that gives you 20% attack speed if you have at least 600 strength or something, which is very easily achievable on like a Marauder or, or a Duelist or Templar even. So you can very easily achieve the 200, uh, sorry, 600 strength and have like a 20 attack. So if they're improving, nodes when they are already this busted also warcry nodes are crazy uh then i think this is very very strong and the, the jewels are gonna be really really strong so but probably people will find a way to abuse it in different ways um, than just 200 melee uh okay we've also lowered the output of some of the most excessively powerful builds from delirium like those that utilize purposeful har harbinger notable passive and the archmage stormbrand so yes the nerfing purposeful harbinger very much expected and Archmage Stormbrand very much expected as well. Simultaneously, we've also introduced many new options and playstyles for people to gain new levels of power. Cool, they're adding new stuff and there's probably gonna be... This is probably uh, having to do with like the keystones and passive skill tree and so on. Two-handed weapons and slow attacks. So this is like their main focus, right? Uh, Two-handed weapons focus on having great risk for great reward. Is it a risk? <laughs> it's just not attacking for a while. <laughs> But over time, their power has dropped relative to 100 weapons. We intend to bring this power back while still keeping the risk. What What is the risk? You mean RNG? Because you get like implicits that have 5% to deal double damage. Like <laughs> that's just RNG, no? <laughs> uh, they're slower on average than uh, 100 weapons without the free mechanics that come with shields or dual wielding, but now have more defensive advantages available to them. Okay, so what are the defensive advantages? That's interesting. Slow heavy hits now deal enough damage to stun even the toughest bosses without as much investment in stun mechanics. Okay. New sources of area of effect and powerful inherent damage from skills and supports free up passive points for life and defenses. Okay. So they want to add more extra AoE on two-handed nodes. The, the two-handed nodes already have some AoE, but they're very subpar because you're trading attack speed for AoE. So if they combine the attack speed and AOE for two handers, then that makes it worth picking up and therefore you get a uh, much lower point investment for the same AOE and therefore you can pick up more defensive uh, things from the skill tree like uh, key pathing toward keystones and life and so on. Okay, that makes sense. New options for a defensive Warcry effect and new armor keystone. Okay. What is the new armor keystone? Is that the one that uh, armor benefits uh, your like elemental damage from hits that you're taking? I think that's what they're talking about here, which is cool, uh, especially for Marauder that relies on endurance charges. Um, all high level two-handed melee weapons have been rebalanced, pushing greater disparity between weapon types. Okay, so some will have like bigger crit, some will have like double damage, some will have massive AOE, some will have uh, other things. Okay, uh, axes will have like the most damage. Actually, axes are going to be kind of insane. Uh, this uh, league, the unique axe, especially the one the rebalanced, the rebalanced unique axe for like a bleed earthquake, is gonna be pretty nuts. The goal is that uh, every high-level two-handed weapon has a role and it's uh, and is an ideal base type for someone. For most two-handed weapon types, each weapon has its own implicit mod focusing on a specific mechanic associated with its weapon type. That's amazing. I really, really like that uh, this, that form of design where things are different and they give you different choices. Like you want maximum AOE, go for this type of a weapon. You want maximum one hit, like maximum damage in one hit but slow attack speed, go for this one. You want faster attack speed but slower top-end damage? Go for this weapon, you know? 
There have been new additions to the passive skill tree providing power and utility, especially for melee characters, like the Tribal Fury Notable. Okay, so Tribal Fury is now going. Tribal Fury is the one that gives your strikes extra attack, kind of like a baby ancestral call, uh, that gives you one additional uh, point of attack when you use a strike skill, such as Molten Strike or Pestilence Strike, Viper Strike, whatever. So this is uh, really nice. It frees up a Notable, and since you're gonna have more points, right? Because your points are more efficient, then maybe you can use that. Um, leech passives give, give much more total recovery per second for life leech than before, so reaching maximum leech is much, much easier for slow attacks and two-handed attacks with some accessible investment. Okay, that's good because leech was like the weakness of the two-handers, right? Everybody was like, oh, two-handers suck because leech sucks with them, so they're aware of that and they're improving that. Many skills intended to work well with two-handed weapons have been reviewed. Sunder, Static Strike, Tectonic Slam were changed significantly. One so Static Strike is interesting because I like the idea of Static Strike. Uh, but the problem is like you want to have like one big hit and then run for a while. But if that hit is too slow, then yeah, it doesn't work, doesn't feel good. But yeah, I've, I've, I know like someone made like a Static Strike uh, Raider, I think, uh, which was good. But yeah, we'll see. That's very interesting, because I'm really interested in trying Static Strike. While many others had numerical changes. The numerical changes are going to be the big things, because uh, th that's really the important part. Some slow attacks with uh, added damage had it removed, and their damage multiplier improved, as flat added damage is inherently favors builds with high attack speed. Ground Slam, Earthquake, Ice Crash, Val Ground Slam, and Val Earthquake had their added physical damage or added cold damage removed in exchange for improving their damage multiplier. Okay, so Ice Crash is going to be even stronger with Hollow Pound Technique. Apparently, the Ice Crash Raider is going to be even stronger with Hollow Pound Technique. And actually, everything is going to be strong with it. And because they have removed the flat damage, they're going to be weaker with... Um, what's it called? With the Face Breakers, right? Because that's Multiplier, and Multipliers want the flat damage, and flat damage wants the Multipliers. So... The, the thing that I'm thinking of is like the Val Ground Slam. Val Ground Slam had an absolutely ridiculous multiplier already. So maybe that's going to be a thing. Maybe Val Ground Slam is going to be the thing. Uh, many of the new War Cries and the new Fist of War support sound skills greatly benefit stroller attacks, synergizing very well with two-handed weapons. There are now many powerful options to invest for the slow attacks rather than the handful of mechanics that existed previously. Herald of Purity has been changed from adding physical damage to granting more physical damage, giving 12% more physical damage at uh, gem level 12, so that's similar to some auras. Um, this will provide an equal benefit to weapon attacks regardless of their speed, correct. So uh, it will not benefit Cyclone so much now, and the slower attacks will actually uh, be able to smash with the Herald of Purity. So like an extra good Herald early on, together with... Uh, with Herald of Ash, yeah? Herald of Ash, Herald of Purity, early on for two-handers is gonna be pretty good. Shockwave support has now multiple cooldown charges, as uh, the new Fist of Word support doesn't work with the triggered shockwaves. Shockwave support is best suited for non-slam attacks. Okay, I'd have to I'd have to see like how the hell it's gonna work. Like nobody used, uses shockwave support, so I don't even know exactly how it works in practice. So we'll have to test that one. Dual wield. The physical damage multiplier when dual wielding has been removed. This was originally added as a fix from half a decade ago to improve the damage of dual wielding relative to the higher damage of the two-handed weapons and the overwhelming defensive power of shields at the time. This allows two-handed weapons to remain the kings of damage, while dual wielding is the king of speed with some defensive benefits. Okay, so dual wielding, the damage multiplier has been removed, which is huge, right? That was 20% damage or something? That is crazy, right? That is a huge, 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 massive nerf um, because of people abusing added damage so much uh, in the current meta that this is definitely gonna shake things up, right? Uh, so the the thing the thing I'm thinking like if you're nerfing, look, okay, so if they're nothing, if they're buffing do, uh, two handers, right, and they're putting them on the power uh, of like some dual wheel builds. And they're removing the, the dual wield benefit so that only the best dual wield builds can keep up with that. Then basically the melee kind of averages out, but spellcasting is still way, way, way better, you know? So like, 
what's the point of like even going for attacks anymore if if they're if none of them are gonna be that good like unless the 200 ch changes are like just insane but i really don't see the the single target of it you know i really don't see the single target of the uh two handers i don't know where the single target will come from like just bleed like bleed impale like it's not i don't think it's good enough you know like it has to be bleed i guess right if you want the single target otherwise like i think it's gonna be not good enough bleed maybe even like do something funky that you can like ignite and poison as well right you're gonna have to add things like that uh, if you want to have single target with these slow attacks okay so dual wield nerfed very heavily like 20 percent less damage basically right or whatever it was before and brands the design of brands make them very powerful for clearing out areas with a very passive play style well it feels very dynamic because you're running a lot but sure you're not casting all the time eh? you're just recalling the brands uh sure as well as dealing damage to bosses with very little time spent standing still yes pretty much none um, this often meant brand characters weren't engaging in many challenging mechanics instead running around waiting waiting for enemies to die uh summoners hello <laughs> We've been known for some time that parts of these mechanics needed. To, we've known for some time that parts of these mechanics needed to change to tone down these advantages before they could, we could introduce new brand skills. We have endeavored to make these changes without heavily impacting the core identity of brands. Brands now drop at their original or recalled location when the enemy they are attached to is slain. I I still don't understand how that can even work. Like, so you cast a brand, and it will kill. A monster and then go back like it so a brand can kill one monster only because it attaches to one monster right so it will kill a, one monster and then go back to where it was and if there are no monsters around it just sits there until you recall it recall it that sounds so bad that sounds like unplayable pretty much i don't understand how how that is supposed to like, they're supposed to move right their whole thing is that they're moving but this makes it like not do that i don't understand like we have to see it in practice because it sounds so bad uh, as it's described brand recall no longer refreshes the duration of brands as well <laughs> this is also so bad so bad we very much appreciate the utility of brand recall uh but it has played a significant part in making brand skill feel very passive i like that there was like when people started playing brands you need to invest right you needed like a shield with with like plus two level of skills put empower in it and then brand recall with that and that gave you like the ability to have much higher level brand recall to lower the cooldown and increase the duration and uh you know we, because you lower the cooldown you, then you can repeatedly do it for for longer and you invested then you got something out of it now it feels like sorry it doesn't work anymore you just lose completely lose that mechanic i really don't like what they do with this like it, the play style is just basically erased uh, we want to move in a direction of players having to recast their brands more often uh, with the option to invest in brand duration to reduce how often one must recast the brands yeah but i mean that already was a thing right uh, brand recall has a longer cooldown and a lower value of cooldown recovery per level we've added brand recall cooldown recovery to a number of places on the passive tree to give new avenues for investing in this rather than receiving the full bonus just for leveling the gem that's fair and i know if they just did that before i mean that would incentivize people to like focus more on that than picking up just crit and mana and stuff like that so that could be also a balance to archmage but uh, yeah i don't like how they just destroyed the mechanic uh, yeah we've lowered the attached duration of brands to bring them in line with mines <laughs> what <laughs> what which also had their detached duration lower when uh, last reviewed this is simply because the duration was unreasonably long especially with the new and plentiful bra brand duration passes because of all these changes we've been able to slightly improve the power of storm brand greatly improve armageddon brand yeah Ar armageddon brand was really fucking shit improve the utility and power uh, granted by brand passives and a new brand cluster and of course introduce new brands including the arcanist brand that lets you trigger many different spells using brands the hierophant brand node has also changed mentioned below okay so yeah they're complete they completely like destroyed the playstyle, and now it's it feels like a completely new thing it's like i don't know totems with slightly bigger range that 
I don't know, that can attach to a monster. Like, so they can attach to a boss. That's the good thing, right? So it's, if they, if the Armageddon brand is buffed enough, it could be a good bossing skill. Um, but other than that, I don't see it. Uh, of course, then somebody will break the brands by using different skills attached to them. Yeah? Warcrys. Warcrys have changed significantly using Warcrys is now far more powerful than before, but comes with a longer use time. What? And a longer cooldown. So longer cast. Okay, but you can, then you're gonna be taking the nodes to make them instant, right? Longer cooldown, cooldowns, cooldowns are no longer shared between Warcrys, so you can use multiple Warcrys if you want, and you have them instant, then you just press a couple buttons at the same time. The goal of these changes is to have Warcrys be something that has a far more significant impact on combat, with great reward for taking the risk of standing still and using an ability while surrounded. You know what I would like to see? I would like to see Warcrys that have that you can stack duration. I would like to see like maybe have a keystone for it or something that you have to pick up. But basically, let's say a work right lasts five seconds. Imagine if you cast it after three seconds and uh, you and then the remaining duration instead of five would be seven. Cast it after three seconds, remaining duration would be nine, you know? So you can recast it to add to the remaining duration so that you can actually, you know, play the game and not just have to spam the war cries all the time you know because other than that you have to have like the perfect time management of like when to use the war cries and it feels like it's going to be pretty tedious but we'll see um many new war cry passive clusters have been added providing more avenues for the investment and in cooldown recovery faster time use giving powerful damage bonuses when using exerted attacks and rewarding the use of multiple war cries yeah i don't like the idea of exerted attacks because Here's, here's in my head how it works, right? You start, you open a map, right? Before jumping into the first pack, you use a war cry to get more damage, right? So you can exert, let's say you can exert like three or four attacks, okay? So you kill a couple of packs, and then you have to cast the war cry again, and then you have to kill a couple of packs, and you have to cast the war cry again, and you kill a couple of packs. Instead of, okay, why would I invest all these nodes into the war cries? I can just invest the nodes into more cluster jewels, boost my damage and then I just deal more damage and I don't have to cast the Warcrys, right? And I go faster. Like, <laughs> why would you use Warcrys, you know? It's such a... Like this mechanic, if you don't make them instant, well, you can just use them while running and keep up like 100% uptime, then they're not worth it, in, in my opinion, just as a playstyle, you know? Many existing unique items with Warcry related mods have been changed significantly, with giving, with some giving entire new effects, most notably the Warband Shields. Okay, so we're gonna have to check these. Uh, I don't think this has been released yet. Maybe it has and I missed it, but if, if it was released and uh, someone has a link to that, you can post it in the comments below or let me know what are the changes, but I have not seen that yet. Stun. Oh yeah, Quinn is screaming right now. Quinn is like... Uh, very excited for this, I bet. Changes to the power of slow attacks have resulted in it being much, much easier to stun bosses simply because of how much damage you can do in a single hit relative to their health uh, rather than increasing the stun threshold. So, yeah, because you can work right and empower your slower attacks, okay? And they have greater multipliers and they have like 15% more damage uh, across the board. So, yeah, they have been really, really strongly buffed. Bosses now become immune to stuns for a short duration after being stunned. What? Most so so you cannot chain lock them, you cannot stun lock them. What's the fun then? What's the point? If you cannot stun lock bosses, what's the point of stun? <laughs> what? Most major bosses and map bosses have a stun immunity duration of two seconds. The duration is longer on powerful bosses like Guardians, Shaver, blah blah blah, lasting four seconds. Stunning is now great defensive advantage for slow, uh, heavy hitting characters without completing, completely mitigating the threat of an encounter. Stun duration becomes more important as you can no longer chain together many short duration stuns. So, does that mean that the, the stun immunity uh, appears after the stun disappears or does it appear or does it happen like when you get stunned? So, my question is, if you stun a monster, let's say that he has a stun immunity of 2 seconds. If I stun him for one second, does he have then remaining one second after that that I cannot stun him and then I can stun him again for one second? Or does he have two seconds after the stun expires, right? Because if it's uh, the first one, 
then you can still chain lock and stun lock them, right? If you have a long enough stun duration. Like if you can stun a, a boss, like if you can stun Elder for four seconds, then you can completely stun him forever, right? But if you can only stun him uh, like for four seconds and then after that he has the four seconds still and uh, where you cannot stun him, then that is not possible. This is not clearly explained here um, which one it is. Okay, ascendancy changes. We made uh, some changes to the Hierophant because of the brands, right? Chieftain, probably also because of the brands, like Armageddon brand, and Berserker because of the war cries. Um, that will be revealing soon. These are changes to one major notable on each tree, focusing on creating powerful individual mechanics that greatly influence how you play rather than overloading ascendancy with ascendancies with a plethora of related stats. Okay, I wonder what's the one for Chieftain, right? We know Berserker is gonna do something with Warcry's, Hierophant with Brands, but Chieftain might be even with like two-handers, like might be Totems and two-handers or something, or might be Brands, we'll see, or might be Warcry's, it might be all of those, you know, actually. The Necromancer's Corpse Pact Notable ha now has a maximum of 200% increased attack and cast speed from consuming corpses as it was possible to get the value to self scale to problematic numbers using Arcanist Brand. <laughs> okay, so you could use Corpse Pact with Arcanist Brand, may you, yeah, okay. So they're preemptively um, fixing uh, that mechanic to not be abusable, okay. Keystones. We've added new keystones to the Marauder Duelist section of the tree. These allow investment in slow impale attacks. What? Can I click on this? The Impaler. When your hits impale enemies, also impale other enemies near them. Inflict 4 additional impales on enemies you impale. Enemies cannot be impaled for 4 seconds after you impale them. What? So they want you to like... This doesn't make any sense. So if you impale, okay, first of all, also impale other enemies near them. How does that do anything? Don't you impale any enemy you hit with an attack anyway, right? So why would you need to impale enemies outside of that area? So let's say you just like ground slam. All the enemies you hit are impaled, right? And then enemies around them are also impaled. So that maybe, maybe it's for like, when you do the the new skill or something or like earthquake and then you have the war cry that spawns from corpses other minions that they will also do their mini earthquake maybe they will hit the minions outside of the initial range of the earthquake and they will be impaled so they will do extra damage but that's like a such a minor little thing uh okay inflict four additional impales on enemies you impale but then you cannot impale them for four seconds S like like are they really expecting people to do less than one attack per second? Like, are they really expecting people to have less than one attack per second attack speed and that being somehow good? I don't, I don't understand. Like, this doesn't seem good. This, this doesn't seem like it would work very, very well. I mean, yeah. I don't know why we would invest that. Mitigating big hits with armor. Oh, okay. Imbalanced guard. So where is this? This is uh, this is the bleed section. Oh, the bleed keystone is not here. It's the bleed thing is removed from here. There is new axe thing because this is dualist on the right. Okay, there's some crazy new shit. This is the one. This is the one where you have like plus one to maximum res, uh, plus one to all maximum elemental resistances and re additional five percent physical damage mitigation. And uh, so this is a very good point for a defensive node. 100% chance to defend with double armor. Maximum damage reduction for any damage type is 50%. Okay, so your armor value for calculating damage mitigation, which means not for Val Molten Shell, is counted as a double. So if you have 10,000 armor, you're mitigating hits as if you have 20,000 armor. But for the smaller hits, if you had, let's say, 70% reduction or 80% reduction, it's gonna go down to only 50. So this is kind of like, kind of like glancing blows type of thing, where you sacrifice the thing that is less important to defend against the thing that is more important, right? So like all the small hits are gonna be reduced by a little bit less, but you don't care that much because they're small hits and they, they're not what kills you most of the time. 
and the big hit that would slam you, you're gonna have double the armor against that. So that is actually a pretty good keystone that you should be picking up if you're going armor. This is definitely very much worth it. I really like that one. Um, very, very good keystone, I think, if you're going armor. Okay, what else? Where are we? Here. Making Warcrys more accessible to non-Warcry invested builds. Each of those allows you to improve some weaknesses that certain strength-based characters, especially two-handed melee characters, could have. Many powerful keystones that were previously only available from Timeless Jewels have been moved to the passive tree. Well, we know that already. We went over that in the previous videos. This has been revealed long time ago. Other passive tree changes. We've made a large number of changes to the passive tree. With the intent of supporting recently introduced mechanics as well as providing more variety to clusters, especially those lacking in obvious power. Okay, providing more variety to clusters, that is awesome. That is amazing, I'm really hyped for that. The passive skill tree is, is so cool to play around with. We wanted to add support for mechanics that have been added in the past few years that as of yet do not have adequate support on the passive tree. Yeah, some of, some of the mechanics like like channeling or whatever, like you have like two little clusters and that's it, right? So they're just adding more clusters and there's just gonna be more options. Some of these mechanics include Rage, Unleash, Corpse Manipulation, War Cries, Heralds and Banners. Hmm. Heralds. <laughs> the Warcry clusters that have uh, that affect exerted attacks are very useful for slower attacks. Yeah. And then Unleash, right? Unleash is like the slam version of spells. Like you run, like Unleash works, for example, uh, pretty well with skills that have big area. Like with something like Arc, right? Like if you have Arc that is very high level and has a lot of chains. You just run for a little bit and then you just bam you, you spam like four arcs right now or five even with these uh with these new uh, passives the martial experience cluster is a good example of how total recovery per second from life leech has improved so okay but with total total recovery per second from life leech aren't we going back to like the val pact thing like where you're just gonna be drain tanking stuff so people are gonna go like two-handers and drain tank anyway sorry two one-handers and drain tank anyway um now taking the longer path through this cluster will give you 220 percent increased total recovery per second from life leech that's pretty big enough to cause a single hit uh to be able to leech up to 6.4 percent of your maximum life per second ah uh, that's six percent life region per second if you had to like hmm i mean this applies mostly to like slayer right this, this is because slayer already loses some of that so you gain some of that back but i guess you get less benefit from it but you get less benefit from everything as a slayer because because the point my point is like if you're gonna get like a huge leech but you hit so infrequently you need to hit at the exact time where you will need the damage right as opposed to like you hit all the time then you leech all the time right because you keep leeching you you get hit and instantly when you get hit you're you're starting to leech because you just hit someone while with well as with slow attacks you need to then wait until you hit someone right if you're attacking very very slowly so i still think it, it's not uh two-handed attacks are worse with leech these changes uh, were made so that big hits against the boss still provide significant less life leech per second rather than having to attack rapidly to reach maximum life leech per second. Many passive skill clusters offer the same thing as other clusters with the only differences being the location on the tree and number of passive skills in the cluster. That is actually true, yes. In this patch we have endeavored to give each cluster its own identity and function. Oh my god, there are gonna be so many changes. Crit multiplier values have been lowered for almost every passive as well as some of the items. Critical base characters far exceeded non-critical characters later in the game this will bring the two a little closer together Ooh, crit nerfs oh no uh, we've added and so now it's gonna be even more important to like scale through different mechanics huh we'll see well i had a build plan that uses a lot of crit multiplier nodes so that sucks uh, we've added new indigo oil based uh, base between uh, the azure and violet oils. This has made uh, more common oils slightly rarer without making rarer oils very even rarer. What? 
some notables will have updated oil costs as a result and the changes uh, of the changes to the passive tree not every indigo oil, oil combination on amulets will yield a notable yet okay there are because they're planning for the future i guess there are no new blighted notable passives and two existing blight notable passives are now on the passive tree new ring and blighted map anointments have been added okay blighted map anointments uh cluster jewels that's the very interesting part right now there's all about that cluster jewels will now remain in the game available from the delirium encounters delirium encounters will be less common but will drop significantly more cluster jewels than before uh, so it will be very easy to get them that's cool uh, many cluster jewels notables were problematic when stacking multiple times rather than limiting the notables to one we've instead rebalanced or significant significantly changed those notables or added caps to the maximum value you can receive from a certain kind of effect okay that's cool that's cool of a particular note purposeful harbinger now gives our aura buffs from scales have eight percent increased effect for you for each herald affecting you up to 40. this means that with uh, five heralds on you and one purposeful harbinger notable you can reach full effect <laughs> okay or you can use three heralds and two purposeful harbinger notable. okay okay i see so that notable can give you 40% and that's enough. It's still big enough, you know, it's still a, still a decent note. But yeah, I mean, that was so abusable that they had to put a cap on it, right? Well, what I would do instead is I would make them deal 3%, right? I would make, the, I would give them 3%, which would make them with five heralds slightly, slightly better than the highest percentage increase effect of auras on your skill tree, right? And which would make sense because it only affects you as opposed to affecting other players as well, like the skill tree ones have. But it would make it, uh, you know, because I make it three because the highest one is, I think, 14%. So with 3%, you'd make it 15% if you have five heralds. So with 15% per uh, one of them, it would still be able, you would still be able to make like a herald stacking build, but it would just be kind of like a normal, really good build, you know. So I would nerf that number to three and then not have a cap, right? Which would still allow for people who want to invest a lot of money into a build to make a strong build, but it wouldn't like completely just break the game, you know? But the way they did it is actually also okay, you know? I think it's also okay. Uh, change to Warcrys have meant that all Warcry cluster jewel notables have been reworked. Okay, all of them are reworked, so no longer broken, like massive insane crit from the, from the Warcrys. Uh, some new effects as well okay some cluster jewel brand notables have also been rebalanced okay uh, weighings of notables and other modifiers have been adjusted with the most powerful notables and two jewel sockets being much less common yeah the two jewel the two ju oh two jewel sockets being much less common okay as crafting an exceptional cluster jewel was far too easy oh so actually crafting them will be more profitable now right since you're going to need to invest more into crafting them and people don't want to spend a lot of time crafting, they will be buying them. So finding a really good uh, cluster jewel notable with like a nice combination of uh, notables and two jewels on a large one, for example, will be worth more money than it was before. Although you will find more of them. But yeah, it's just more chance at finding money. I like that. I think I like that change. Uh, there'll be... The, it will be higher it will be harder to acquire the very best ones yeah? uh, the unique jewels from the simulacrum will still be available though will be rarer as a result of the delirium not being in every area voices and megalomaniac are unchanged while split personality is now limited to two okay still might use it in this in the strength stacking build i guess um, this jewel was the go-to jewel for any attribute stacking build so we want to push more variation yeah instead of just stacking this you're gonna have to have other things okay no keystones from any of the delirium no other keystones from any of the delirium... okay again no keystones from any of the delirium unique jewels have been changed ha 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 i knew it so we got the hollow pound technique unnerved and the multiplier on ice crash increased and also we can now use earthquake with increased multiplier so hollow palm technique is going to be massive like hollow palm technique wow okay 
That's nice. That's nice. Even though the dual wield is nerfed, I think that's why they didn't do it, right? Because with hollow palm technique, you count as uh, the dual wielding, and dual wielding had 20% or whatever, like more physical damage, and now basically you're getting the 20% left. So, so already you're nerfing the hollow palm technique by 20% or whatever it was, or 15. So it is already kind of nerfed by the token of like two handed, um, sorry, dual wielding being nerfed. But the keystone itself is not nerfed, so you can still do all the stacking and everything. That's really, really nice. Okay, so it's still gonna be playable. It's still gonna be pretty strong. Um, just like Simulacrum Jewels, this will be less frequent. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, these cluster jewels notable are no longer available. Gladiator Combat, Deep Cuts. Oh, I know Deep Cuts was really good, right? It was like the main intensity. Confident Combatant, No Witnesses. Uh, any existing notables already on jewels will be retained, so you can still keep like the legacy ones. So in standard, you can get some money from that. Some notables or some of their effects have been moved to the passive tree, with the deep cuts being the only exception. Okay, so let me check what was the deep cuts. I got the list of notables here. So let's check here. Uh, deep cuts. 15% chance to impale enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, this one was broken. Deep Cuts was broken, so they are removing that. Um, what were the other? Confident Combatant. Okay, let's check what that one was. 1% 1 increased damage per 1% chance to block attack damage. Huh. Okay. So, this one is no longer available. Some of them might be... This might be moved on the tree. Okay. No Witnesses. What was the No Witnesses one? 10% uh, chance to gain elusive on kill, 25% elusive. Oh, this one is moved to the skill to the passive skill tree. We know that elusive is next to shadow. It's kind of broken. Like uh, elusive is really, really broken. So elusive is gonna be on the passive tree. Uh, gladiator, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, the crit crit multi per 10 maximum energy on on shield. That could be really abusable. Uh, that was really really nice. For some reason, the shield ones are being nerfed. Huh. I wonder why. I wonder why they're nerfing the shield so much. Intensity, What, what that, was that unleash or something? No, area damage. Yes, yeah, skills supported by intensify have plus one to maximum intensity. This one is 100% moved on the passive skill tree. They said that. And then did I not check this one? Which one we also have to check? We checked this one. Okay, we checked all of them. Okay. Val Molten Shell, of course. Yeah, uh, this, this has been... Uh, this has been uh, for a long time uh, coming. Vol Molten Shell was providing too much damage mitigation. You think so? <laughs> for too long with too little investment. This resulted in Vol Molten Shell being used on a huge proportion of characters, including those that didn't get much armor beyond a granite flask. Yep. <laughs> we intend to keep it as the best defensive Vol skill of all armor invested for all armor invested characters, while bringing it closer to the power of, of Vol Grace. It will still last for a long duration, but now requires a greater amount of uh, armor to reach its cap and mitigates a much lower percentage of damage. While active, it also gives more armor instead of a flat value of armor, multiplying your existing armor value rather than giving an effect that is less relevant to armor invested characters. So it's more of a, like a specialized thing. If you invest in a lot of armor, it's still gonna be broken. If you don't, then maybe you want something else. Okay. Uh, Val Molten Shell also removes and is removed by other guard skills. Okay, so you cannot use Val Molten Shell with, uh, for example, Steel Skin or something like that. Okay, Cyclone. We have removed the stun immunity from Cyclone. Oh, but made no other changes to it. Uh, this immunity was originally added to prevent implementation problems when positional desync was common, not as a core part of the skill design. Being able to move while dealing damage is already a powerful defensive benefit and melee attackers are usually more resistant to stuns. So, okay, the skill will still make you immune to knockback. Yeah, that would be weird if it didn't. And Vol Cyclone still retains its stun immunity. Okay, that's cool. You can pop the Vol Cyclone, Vol Cyclone if you are getting stunned. Okay, that makes sense. Archmage support provided two significant damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It now provides less added lighting damage based on mana spent than it did before. Down to 108, uh, what was it before? Not sure, but okay, Archmage is nerfed, we get it. Unique rebalanced, um, this is uh, really huge because a lot of them, like this is gonna cause some people to make a lot of currency this league <laughs> by getting the right ones. And I already have a couple of them in mind that if I see 
uh, them early on. I'm, I'm definitely going to be buying them if I can afford that. We've made many changes to unique items that were either falling, failing to achieve their desired goals, had fallen behind uh, other competing items, or were not deemed interesting enough for our current standards for unique items. Our goal for each of these unique items is to make sure there is a place on the, for them on characters, even if that place is while leveling. Yes, that's cool. Um, okay, 200 unique weapons have been reviewed and tweaked as a result of their uh, base types being changed. Uh, so yeah, the implicits are going to be different, right? Uh, overall, rare items should be more competitive uh, with the most powerful unique items and there will be greater variety uh, of useful uh, unique two-handed weapons. Okay, a few unique weapons that provided too much power, especially after changes to their base type, have had some value values lowered. So yeah, Starforge, yeah, 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 yes. Star, I knew that Starforge is gonna be this one. Uh, we'll now have lower damage per second than on life, while other items, are, yeah, because they will have more powerful implicits. Uh, that's why they have to nerf the actual damage. Starforge received the most significant reduction of damage. Yep, it provided more physical damage than any other unique weapon by a huge margin and it was designed before pure physical damage was a competitive way to build skills. It is now more in line with the damage of other unique weapons while retaining its special shock area and life modifiers. It now has a custom impressive of 30% increased global physical damage. Huh. As the infernal sword base Type now he usually gives 30% increased elemental damage with attack skills. All right, the circle of field nostalgia regret blah 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 uh, have now their effect affected heralds now give lower values to of reservation cost reduction and lower values of buff effect. Oh no, oh no, the necromancer herald of agony buff effect 100% uh, poison chance because <laughs> you could like get. Uh, you could get the uh, cluster keystone uh, for heralds, right? That you only use one herald and it has doubled, doubled the um, effect of the buffs. And then you can stack a couple of uh, circles of uh, nostalgia or whatever was the one for the herald of agony. And you would have 100% chance to poison and you wouldn't have to invest in any chance to poison without any, like with no gems, no weapons, nothing like just purely from that. So that sucks because you cannot like now get enough uh, chance to poison so you actually have to invest so this changes completely like the so one item in the build at least these rings provided too much power and were too obvious choice for so many builds yeah threshold jewels the unique threshold jewels were dual strike okay magma orb as magma orb molten strike and fireball have been changed they now provide effects that change how the skill is built uh, or downsides uh, to affect their uh, beneficial effect, each acting as a way to change how you build or play a skill rather than a must-have boost uh, for the cost of a jewel slot. Glacial Hammer's Shattered Chain Threshold Jewel will no longer drop? Huh? What do you mean will no longer drop? Why? What? Can you still like... What? I don't understand. Like, is it removed from the game or can you get it somehow but it will just not drop and you have to like chance it or something all of these skills have been given increases to damage area utility to compensate for the power loss from the threshold jewel that's nice uh, we'll have continue we'll have to con we'll have to continue to look at the roles of the threshold jewels why the glacial hammer one the rarity was like it was like a meme cool meme build where you could get like camellia's avarice and uh, the gloves that you can only kill frozen enemies and you can like get a raider uh, or like inquisitor and just like stack freeze and just farm rarity like just farm uniques like crazy with that build huh that sucks like i want that back that's re that really sucks i'm gonna get that one i'm gonna get that on standard now like i need that on standard i'm gonna make a character with this on standard because it sucks like i i definitely wanted to make something with this okay slower proj now grants a lower value of less projectile speed than before this is because this single support was massively multiplying the close range damage of certain skills. So ball lightning nerfs. Okay. And all of them were being balanced around the value from this support. <laughs> it also means that we can be more generous with projectile speed granted by other sources. Molten Strike, Magma Orb and Ball Lightning have had their damage and some other properties improved. What the fuck? As their close range damage is now. Hello? 
They're buffing ball lightning? Are you shitting me? <laughs> They're actually buffing ball lightning. Molten Strike, Magma Orb and Ball Lightning have had their damage and some other properties improved. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Let's shut up. Let's let's not talk about this. Uh, we didn't see anything. This, there is nothing here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Uh, other smaller changes. Uh, the Shakari Pantheon has had its modified change to have the duration of poison on you and prevent you being poisoned while you have at least five poison effects with you. Okay, so this no longer makes you immune to poison. That sucks. So you cannot be immune to poison. Uh, through this, at least. But you can have like a, you can pick up Notable if you really need that. Uh, we've made improvements to the Totem AI for certain skills that had special targets like Blade Blast and Corpse skills like Detonate Dead, Voltile Dead, Cremation Body Swap. Okay, so they will now detonate the corpses that are close to enemies, I guess, right? That's really cool. So maybe there's something to do with that. Uh, Hexproof now gives immunity to curses on top of uh, preventing any curse being applied. This means that if you gain Hexproof, you'll immediately remove any curses on you. This was an oversight. Okay. So huge changes, a lot of crazy changes, but most of them uh, we've seen coming. The one thing I haven't seen coming is the ball lightning buff, but don't tell anyone. Um, yeah, so that is crazy. So it seems like the dual wield nerf is like the one of the biggest changes that will be definitely very impactful because like 20% or whatever less damage is definitely really huge. It's like losing half a support gem pretty much. So that's very, very strong. It is a nerf to hollow palm technique as well. However, the hollow palm technique itself is unchanged. So that's good. If they, if they nerfed hollow palm technique on top of that, it would be just completely wrecked. But now it's still going to be amazing for like quick leveling and stuff like that uh, just a little bit less damage but that's fine uh, so yeah so amazing amazing great we're gonna have to wait for patch notes to see the exact values but everything pretty much is as, as expected let me know in the comments which changes surprised you which changes you expected what do you think some of them mean like when some of them are like really not explaining like the stun one like do you think we can still chain stun enemies or does that mean we can't chain stun at all no matter our duration of stun thank you guys for watching and see you next time